What is up my friends? You are very welcome along to my match reaction here on Anfield Agenda after Liverpool have beaten West Ham once again by five goals to one to book our place in the fourth round of the League Cup where, I'm not sure if you're aware or not, we've been drawn to take on Brighton and Hove Albion at the Amex. So a difficult enough away tie. I'm going to take you through my thoughts on the game as well as, of course, going into some of the statistics around it. Asking you guys to let us know your thoughts in the comment section. Drop a like on the video if you enjoy it. And most importantly, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. As you can see, we are being brought to you thanks to our incredible sponsors, Manscaped. Don't forget, you can get yourself 20% off and free shipping. That is 20% off and free shipping store-wide at manscaped.com. Simply use our discount code ANFIELD20 at checkout. Whether it's the Performance Package 5.0, the Weed Whacker Ear and Nose Hair Trimmer, or the Lawn Mower 5.0 to make sure the grass and your pitch is playable, our friends at Manscaped have always got you covered with that incredible offer. And thank you to them for their support. So, my thoughts on the game... Look, it was uh, certainly a game that probably flattered us with the scoreline. The sending off of Alvarez absolutely gave us a bit of breathing room and the ability to see it out. But you got to give credit to those out there. Diogo Jota grabbed himself a brace. Cody Gakpo a brace as well. And Mohamed Salah came off the bench to score and break his little duck as well. So all in all, a pretty good uh, evening's work. For Arna Slot, you're looking at it and you're asking, are any of the players who are on the fringes giving him a headache? And maybe outside of Cody Gakpo, who was absolutely giving him a selection headache there on the left side between him and Diaz. I don't think many others tonight will really have uh, put themselves in Arna Slot's thinking, I guess the exception to that would be Kelleher, but we all know how good Kelleher already is. And again, tonight he backed that up with another good display. Uh, let's look at some of the underlying numbers from the game before we go in and speak about the major incidents in it. West Ham fans, if you're watching, genuinely would love to know your thoughts on the game as well. Do you think your boy was unlucky to get the second yellow? A couple of penalty shouts as well that West Ham fans had their hands up for. Let us know your thoughts on them. So look, Liverpool had 62% possession in this game to West Ham's 38 21 shots from the Reds, 11 on target, 12 from West Ham with 3 on target. Uh, corners, 5 to Liverpool, 4 to West Ham. Liverpool played 533 passes, West Ham 334. Passing accuracy, a very respectable 91% for Liverpool, West Ham 77. Uh, and tackles, 18 for Liverpool, 21 for West Ham. And of course, the biggest start of them all, the scoreline. Liverpool scored 6 goals today, 5 for us, 1 for West Ham. But you have to say, nothing Jarrell Kwanzaa could have done about that on goal. It was hit Adam Fernando from a short distance. It went off his leg and went in. Can't really uh, put any blame on the young centre-back for that one. So let's talk about the start in 11 and what we've seen today. I wasn't expecting it to be vintage, if I'm being honest with you. You make that many changes to a team, you expect it to be a little bit scrappy. Um, but I was, again, really impressed with how we dealt with going behind. We went over to Milan, fell 1-0 down, didn't panic, won the game 3-1. Today at Anfield, went 1-0 down, didn't panic. Equalised very quickly with a fine header from Diogo Jota. An assist as well for Federico Chiesa. So, welcome to the club, Federico. And yeah, from that point on, we built our way into a commanding lead over the course of the 90 minutes. The second goal from Diogo Jota, I thought, was better than his first one. It was a great ball slipped into him from Curtis Jones. And then Diogo Jota does what you expect Jota to do in that position. Find the back of the net. I want to say a special mention, though, for Cody Gakpo. I speak about first world problems all the time and Luis Diaz and Gakpo are giving Arnas Law many headaches in a good way for the battle down that left-hand side. Cody Gakpo got himself a brace today and deservedly so. I thought he was phenomenal. He was your Anfield agenda man of the match. He was my man of the match as well. I know Sky gave it to Diogo Jada. That is understandable as well. He also scored a brace. But I thought Gakpo was, was top-notch today. Uh, Darwin as well. I want to give Darwin a bit of credit today. Yes, he may not have gotten on the score sheet, but I thought that his runs were making space for his fellow forwards. His work rate and endeavour always there. And if he could have capped it off with a goal, that would have been brilliant, but he didn't. But I do want to just say I was impressed at what I've seen tonight from Darwin. And again, the battle's there between himself and Diogo Jota. Who do you go with on Saturday against Wolves? Love to know your thoughts in the comment section. The great man came off the bench. And again, he'd gone a couple of games without scoring. No need to worry about that. Steps back in tonight. Ball came at him very quickly. Adjusted his body. Used the inside of his foot and lifted it into the roof of the net. 
all in all, pretty perfect. Want to have a little word on Curtis Jones as well. I feel he had a much better second half than he did first half. Sometimes I feel he still dwells on the ball a little bit long. I don't know, I'd love to know your thoughts on that one. But, got an assist for Diogo Jota and never gave up. Always kept going. But I don't see him displacing Sobosly, McAllister or Grafenberg anytime soon, if I'm being honest. Again, would love to know how you guys feel about that one. Going back to the defence for a minute. When you make four changes across the back line, you expect it to be a little bit shaky. And that's exactly what I thought we were tonight. Kwanzaa and, and Gomez are going to have way better games than that. And this doesn't speak to their quality. It's difficult to be dropped in like that when you haven't had minutes, you haven't had repetition, and you don't know what your centre-back partner is going to be doing. I also thought our full-backs tonight a little bit shaky. Connor Bradley will have far better games than he did tonight. But that's okay. It's a learning experience, and he will learn from it. I've no doubt about that. Costas, I don't know. I don't know what to make of Costas. Again, loads of effort, but... Other than his set-piece delivery, I have to say I'm not really the biggest fan of Costas uh, playing for Liverpool. I think we could improve in that position. But he wasn't awful today, so I've got to be fair about that as well. The one player I feel really bad for, though, is Watoro Endo. I feel like he's walked into a very difficult situation because he came to play for Jürgen in a role that he's far more used to playing. Yes, he had to play for Jürgen maybe 10 or 15 yards higher up than he would have at Stuttgart, but... On the a slot, I just don't think he's going to really be able to make any headway because it's just not the way Arna wants that position to be played. You'll always get endeavour, effort and professionalism from Endo because that's the type of guy he is. And today he kept battling and kept going as well. But I'd be a liar if I sat here and I said I think he's probably changed the manager's mind on him. I don't. I think that performance will probably only underline the fact that we still do need to go out there and bring in somebody to cover for Gravenberg uh, when he needs to be rested or rotated. Uh, other notable starts today, of course, came for Federico Chiesa, his first game at Anfield, uh, his first start at Anfield. And I felt like in the first half it was weird because there wasn't much space up there. With us playing four attacking players, I thought that we didn't really have too much... Uh, opportunity to get himself and Darwin really involved in the game. The ball seemed to be coming into, at least this is my perception of it, Diogo Jota and Cody Gakpo's fear a lot more. And when we did utilise the right-hand side, I felt like it was more with Connor Bradley going down the line. In the second half, when we did change back into a system that was a bit more familiar to us, I thought we looked exactly like that, like it was more comfortable. And we've seen the game out with a canter. Uh, West Ham fans, I'm going to touch on the two penalty shouts that you guys had. And I'm not just saying this because I'm a Liverpool fan, but they weren't penalties. The one with Costas, the ball hit off his belly first and then, yes, hit the bottom of his elbow. But the rules are the rules. And if it hits off your chest or stomach part first before ricocheting onto your arm, we know what's written in the rules there. And with regards to the Joe Gomez one, arms were down by his side and you're never getting that in the Premier League. So not surprised that Andy Madley didn't point to the spot there either. Uh, the Alvarez red card. Look, I thought it was a bit of a shithouse challenge, if I'm being honest with you. Mohamed Salah had done them both down the right-hand side, had played the ball ahead, was trying to run on towards it. And then Alvarez came in and cleared him out. And it was a straightforward second yellow for the ref. So don't really have much sympathy from there. Uh, and Julian Nopetegui, I don't think he's going to last too long either, if I'm being honest. I was really surprised that West Ham gave him the job after Moyes. I don't think it was a good fit. I don't really think he's got a body of work that suggests he was going to do anything impressive at West Ham. Got off to a good start, a couple of uh, wins, and then after that, if my memory's right, it's been loss, draw, loss, and loss. And out of the League Cup now as well. So I'll leave it up to West Ham fans to have their say. But for me, I think West Ham should have gone in a different direction for their manager. That is pretty much it for me, my friends. All road now points to Wolves and half five kickoff on Saturday again, which of course we'll be covering here on the channel starting from half past four. Lots of stuff coming up in the next day or two as well. Tomorrow I'm recording with David Lynch. That's going to be up tomorrow evening. I'm also recording a podcast episode with Jack Gill, which will be up on all your favourite podcast apps on Friday. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Just want to say thank you again for your incredible support. Thank you to our sponsors, Manscaped. And we do want to know your thoughts in the comment section. So don't forget to let us know your thoughts on the game. Drop a like on the video if you enjoy it and hit that subscribe button. Also, we are live in Liverpool. Don't forget about that. November 15th, you can get your tickets with the link in the description. It's an all-ages show at the Hot Water Comedy Club. So we'd love to see you there if you are available. And I'll see you tomorrow. Same time, same place. Talk to you then. Bye-bye.